Hi, I don't know how to promo things, but this video is all about character design, and I wanted to mention that I have a book coming out next year that's all about character design too. It's gonna be in stores worldwide this April, but pre-orders are available now, link in the description, all that jazz. Thank you, and enjoy today's video, bye! <laughs> Hello, hope you're doing well, and welcome back to part 2 of my attempts at designing original Genshin Impact characters. If you haven't seen the first batch that I made previously, I'll try and put a link to that video somewhere on screen right about now. I was trying to figure out last time around whether I wanted this to be a recurring format or not, and now I'm definitely thinking that it'd be fun to kind of give this whole setup a little bit more structure and dip back into it every now and then like a fun little design challenge. But before I do dive into kind of fleshing out the structure of what I want this whole thing to be, I also want to give a really quick thanks to today's sponsors, Skillshare. Not only were the folks at Skillshare kind enough to sponsor two of my videos in a row, but they're also continuing to offer you guys one of their best ever deals when you sign up using the link in this video's description. Whatever topic you might want to get a better understanding of, there's more than likely going to be a course on Skillshare to help you reach your goals, whether you're looking to improve your academic skills, boost your career, or just try out a new hobby. And no matter which avenue you want to pursue, you can take it at your own pace by stacking lessons, completing course projects, and receiving peer feedback. If you do indeed want to try it out for yourself, then make sure to use the aforementioned link in the description because the first 500 people to do so will get a full one month long trial of Skillshare completely for free. Anyway, the tentative title for this new format is Character Design Compendium, because that's fun to say, but uh, <laughs> it is also definitely a name that is subject to change if I do happen to come up with anything snappier or catchier. I have been considering something along the lines of cooking up character designs, or character design kitchen even, uh, or something, for reasons that will hopefully become clear in a moment. But yeah, the name of these videos might change sometime down the line is what I'm saying, and I definitely appreciate y'all's input in figuring out a solid title, so uh, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Comments. But for now, I'm gonna go with the compendium one, and we'll see what the future holds. Um, <laughs> in any case, I didn't really include any of this kind of preamble last time around because, like I say, I didn't really know if I wanted this to be a recurring thing, so I kind of just treated it as a one-off. But this time, I really wanted to, like, properly outline how I want this whole character design compendium, or kitchen, or whatever it might end up being, to work, and what I want it to be. The long and short of it is that I'm basically going to be treating this as a character design challenge, specifically challenging myself to try and create original character designs for already existing fictional universes, like for my favourite shows and games, by studying what kind of set in stone or unwritten design rules those things might already have in place, and trying to learn from them by sticking within those parameters. I'll start by laying out what those parameters might be, and then dive right into working on some character designs. I didn't lay out the ground rules for Genshin Impact's character design rules of thumb, or uh, I think sometimes it's even called like a design bible too for certain projects, so yeah I'm gonna talk about them for a little second and then we'll get into it. So whether I'm doing fan designs like this or working on my own projects, uh, for me at least I typically find it easiest to work from the ground up, going from the absolute basics of like what essential core elements have to be factored in as a basis for any character in this universe, and then go from there, and build outwards to fill in any blanks, resolve any question marks, and just really flesh a character design out into more of a fully realised creation. It's kind of like a secret recipe kind of situation, like the character designs from two different things might be based on similar ingredients at their core, but if you study the ways that they actually branch out from those bases, and the different kind of flavours, so to speak, that go into their construction, that's always going to be the key factor in making something that both looks and feels like it belongs in any given universe. Now both this video and the previous one of these are obviously focused on Genshin Impact specifically, so my rough recipe for a solid Genshin Impact character design looks a little something like this. Basic Ingredients these are the factors that serve as a very basic checklist for the build of any given character, so in no particular order they will need a body type or in-game model. A lot of people, myself included, have been hoping that there might be more variety added to the game someday in this department, but for now the available options are chibi, girl, boy, tall lady, and tall man. And you absolutely can draw your own characters with any body type you want by the way, but the whole point of this self-imposed challenge for me is that I want to try and stay within the bounds of the game's current design parameters as much as possible, so these were the only options that I allowed myself to work with. Next ingredient is weapon. Each playable character will wield one of five types of weapon, either a sword, bow, polearm, claymore which is a big sword, or a catalyst which is basically some kind of spellbook or magic focus. Their individual movesets can include other weapons or forms of combat, but they still need to fall into one of the these five categories as a baseline. Region, aka the in-game location that a character comes from. There are five that we can explore in the game so far, Mondstadt, Liyue, Inazuma, Sumeru, and Fontaine, plus two that we haven't been to yet called Natlan and Shinejnaya, which was really difficult to say there, wow. Uh, <laughs> 
For the purposes of this whole endeavour, I am going to be sticking to just the five regions that we're already familiar with. And the final, probably most important factor for any Genshin Impact character is their vision, which is a little gemstone accessory that allows them to wield one of seven natural elements. Pyro, Geo, Dendro, Animo, Cryo, Hydro, or Electro, which equate to fire, rock, plants, air, ice, water, and electricity, respectively. I mentioned as much last time around, but I actually made a whole spreadsheet of all of these base traits to figure out which combinations were the rarest, or might even be entirely missing from the current Genshin roster, so that I could try and aim to use the rarest or even those entirely missing trait combinations as a basis for my own designs. So that's your basic template, right? But in all my time playing the game and trying to crack the character design code for this video, I found that there are also some unwritten rules and observations that I cobbled together personally that, again, I may very well be way off the mark with, but that I did use as a rough set of additional guidelines that definitely helped to inform the designs I ended up making. And these additional factors are basically the extra bits and pieces that, at least as far as I could figure out, really help to, yeah, just again kind of spice up a design and give it that uniquely Genshin Impact kind of visual flavor. So again, in no particular order, here's my list of seasonings. Um, <laughs> First of all, the region that your character is from will inform their fashion, and each region has its own subtle design rules that come with it. Speaking of which, Genshin's designs in general feature a high level of detail, whether that be through textures, patterns, colouring, fabric layering, accessories, or all of the above. One key detail to factor in as well, generally speaking, is that Genshin character designs will also typically feature at least one floaty or dangly element that can trail after a character as they run, whether it's their hair, a cape, a long belt, or anything else. Also, if you take a look at any character design, costume design, whatever it might be from Genshin, you will tend to notice that they are all asymmetrical. Furthermore, each character will have their own unique job or role within the Genshin universe that will then inform their visual design, like Yoemiya being a firework maker with a festival theme, or Fremine being a diver with a bunch of nautical elements on his outfit. Also, typically, whatever region that they're from or role they might have, the Genshin design team is very big on showing a little skin, especially so if we're talking about the legs of just any lady character on the cast. Um, <laughs> Additionally, many Genshin characters are inspired in some way or other by mythical or real-life historical figures. And finally, one fan theory that I'm also definitely on board with is the idea that characters get their visions because they fulfill a certain personal criteria, which, if you take into consideration, can then help to inform ideas about an original character's backstory and identity, which I did kind of go into a little bit last time around. A lot of people tend to theorise that it has to do with their dreams and goals and their passions, which is definitely something that has some credence, but I found it really interesting to look into the common threads between the type of vision that existing Genshin characters might have, and the way that they relate to the other people around them, as opposed to looking into their personal ambitions or anything like that. So this is going to be a mix of popular fan theories and then just some patterns that I found while working on these videos myself, but the criteria that I personally kept in mind while working on my own Genshin character concepts were Pyro characters tend to be the successes to family legacies. Geo characters are either leaders or relied upon in some way for the well-being of a group. Dendro characters I will admit I don't have quite as solid of a theory about, but my current working understanding is that at the very least a lot of Dendro characters seem to be held in high esteem by a lot of other people, so it could be that Dendro characters are maybe trying to live up to the expectation of others in some capacity, but if any of you guys have better interpretations on that, please do let me know because I feel like that's the missing piece of the puzzle for me at the moment. Um, <laughs> this next one is a big fan favourite theory, but animo characters will typically have either lost a loved one or come very close to it. Cryo characters are generally rocking some kind of dual identity in either a tragic or ironic this but that sort of way. Hydro characters, I've noticed, often have a high profile public identity that contrasts with their private one. And then electro characters are often societal outliers who rise to be high ranking in their field. Anyway, that's just a game theory, as they say, and that's the recipe that I was trying to stick to while working on all of these uh, various characters. I'm trying to do one design for each of the seven elements that I mentioned, and I already covered Pyro, Geo, and Dendro last time around, so let's get into today's batch and finish up the rest. Alrighty, so I was going to go over today's designs in no particular order, but actually I think it might be more fun to go in ascending order and end on a high note with the design that I think turned out the best. So first up today is my attempt at a cryo character. The reason I'm starting off with this one is because in all honesty this was, uh, even including the designs I made last time around, probably the weakest of the entire lot. From start to finish this one just felt really vague in concept and like it was, it was kind of just one of those where I couldn't really get a solid grasp on what I wanted it to be just the entire way through making it. 
And uh, before I go on here, I don't say that in any, uh, like, I'm, I'm not trying to come out of the gates in this video with like a, oh, this one went so badly, it was a disaster, like, sob story or anything. Um, <laughs> admittedly, I have been fighting some absolutely major art block for the better part of a couple of weeks now, really, and I did work on all of these pieces kind of in the midst of that, so, you know, one or two of these, I don't feel like I maybe did my best with, but I still wanted to include them here as they turned out regardless, and more to the point, I did want to highlight the fact that maybe they didn't turn out as well as I wanted them to. Because, you know, I know I always say so, but it is really important to remember, um, and certainly for me to remind myself of this as well even, it's it's really important to remember that you can't knock it out of the park every single time, and no matter how long you've been drawing for, or how badly you want to make something just amazing every time you pick up a pen, you're still gonna fall short sometimes and feel kind of disappointed in what you make. And it's not joyous, but it's all part of the process. Anyway, with that said, uh, I should also stress that I don't think this was a complete disaster either, I just kind of feel like I missed the mark with this one. But yeah, uh, the little amount of ideation that I did have for this character was that they would obviously have a cryo vision, and then because this was the rarest combination of traits for that particular element, that they would also have a catalyst weapon and be from Inazuma, which is the Japanese inspired region in the game. As for body type, that was actually a lot harder to pick because cryo is the most frequently occurring element in the game, so there are already a metric ton of cryo characters of every shape and size. I originally designed this character as a chibi before deciding to draw them with the girl model instead, purely because quite a few of the game's chibi characters are cryo already, and none of the other characters that I thought up for this set were built around the girl body type yet. And along with wanting to make a character for each element, I also did want to try and have a go at making a character for each of the different body types at least once. The thing is, girls are also the most popular body type in the game by a wide margin, so I had a really tough time with this one trying to make it look distinct enough from the rest of the game's existing roster to really stand out on her own as a fully realised design. And again, I still don't really think I quite managed to do that in the end, she does kind of come off a bit similar to Ganyu or Ayaka, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> in hindsight, I do kind of wish that I had stuck with the chibi body type, because the initial inspiration I had for this character was a Japanese folktale spirit called a Yuki Warashi, which translates to snow child or snow baby. And to the best of my understanding, these spirits are basically snowmen who get brought to life as children in straw coats who stay with childless couples during the winter. I think for the sake of simplicity by the way, I'm also going to give this character the name Yuki after that folktale. But yeah, uh, a big part of Inazuma's lore in the game is that it's home to a lot of these folklore creatures or yokai and there are a couple of existing characters who similarly take inspiration from these kinds of legends, like Kitsune and Nekomata and stuff like that. So I figured in order to fit with that at least theorized theme for people with cryovisions that I mentioned before where they are at odds with themselves or removed from their heritage somehow, I thought that maybe this could be one of those snow yokai who actually lives among people all year round, or maybe even solely in the spring and summer months contrary to the original folktale. Or maybe they could even be a normal Yukiwarashi who somehow managed to stay with their human family for longer than winter and got stuck in the human realm, and now they make snowmen of their own because they miss their yokai friends, and all of that would be done with some kind of snow globe looking kind of magical move set like you can kind of see here. Hopefully you can also see what I meant when I said that the concept for this one was kind of vague. Um, <laughs> as far as her visual design goes anyway, I started off by drawing her with that straw coat from the Yuki Warashi folktale, but over time it ended up morphing into more of a cozy hooded shoulder cape instead, mostly because I couldn't figure out how to incorporate the really triangular shape of those kinds of historical snow coats into more of a stylish, Genshin appropriate design. I really do wish that I had been able to pull that off though because the concept was really fun, but it just kind of wasn't meant to be. What I did do instead was give her a basket of sticks, since another fun at odds kind of angle for her backstory could potentially be that she is a snow person who goes around selling firewood, or something. Um, <laughs> I also wish that I'd managed to uh, at least somehow find a way to give her an outfit that had some kind of straw looking elements or colours carried throughout it as well, so that it could at least reference the straw coat from the folktale. But I got really stumped with the colour palette on this one, so her entire design ended up being based more around an icy blue and teal kind of colour scheme. I tried to mix cosy winter clothing elements with the kimono adjacent fashion that a lot of Inazuman characters wear, and gave her a dress that mimics kimono folds, along with open toed boots which are another pretty common Inazuman 
fashion item, and a thick bowed belt that mimics both the look of a tasseled scarf and the kind of obi belts that you also get around kimonos a lot of the time. One of the finer details and kind of unwritten rules of Inizuman characters' outfits is that they will all feature some kind of braided rope and tassel element, so I also tried to make sure to include that too. All in all, I do think that everything came together functionally enough for this one, but like to me at least, again, I feel like it met the recipe requirements, and you know, I'd look at it and be like, oh, this is clearly a Genshin-inspired design, but something about it just doesn't feel quite like it's fully finished, or, or quite like a fully finished character that would actually appear in the game, if nothing else. So you know, might need a bit more refinement, I'd say. So, moving on up the ranks, next up for today is a character that I think came way closer to hitting the mark, and this one is my take on a Hydro character. He was based on the boy body type, uh, just like the previous design, he also hails from Inazuma, and his weapon is a Claymore, which I went for because there are no existing Hydro Claymore wielding characters, god that was a hell of a sentence, um, <laughs> but there are currently no Hydro Claymore characters at the time of me making this, so I knew I had to try my hand at crafting one here. This guy is another character where I also also had a bit of a tough time deciding exactly what I wanted him to be, because at first I had the idea in mind that he could be some kind of shipwright or boat builder, and I thought that was 100% what I was going to be basing his design on. But then I had a much funnier idea. Specifically, uh, like I say, as of right now there are currently no Hydro characters in the entire game who wield a Claymore, right? But there is a Claymore weapon that is literally just a fish. Um. <laughs> So I thought, what if that's what I base him on, actually? Uh, and instead of being a shipwright, this guy could just be like a really revered, almost cryptid level, like legendary member of the Fishing Association, which is a group that pretty much just exists within the world of Genshin in order to facilitate the existence of a fishing minigame. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, as a concept, I love him. I think his character would be really funny. And uh, yes, I drew him with a different claymore here because this one looked Inazuman and has a water aesthetic and generally seemed like it would be kind of a cool match for the kind of splash art that I was trying to make, but please know that for all intents and purposes his true signature weapon is the big swordfish. Um, <laughs> Now obviously for his overall concept, I did end up taking my main inspiration from that one joke weapon, but when it came to the composition of this actual piece, and in turn also this character's name, I actually tried to at least partially reference the famous Hokusai painting of the waves, because that famous painting was what I was originally going to base this character's entire aesthetic off of back when I was still intending to make him as a shipwright. As a partial nod to that original source of inspiration, I named this character Sai, like short for Hokusai and posed him so that he's leaning on a boat and put a big arced wave in the background of his splash art here, with plenty of fish breaching their way out of it. As far as his overall visual design goes, it was a ton of fun to try and put together, but I don't know if I executed it quite as cleanly as I wish I could have. Where the last design was suffering from a lack of potential design elements, I think this one almost had the opposite problem, where I had too many ideas that I really wanted to include, and it ended up a little bit muddled in places because of it. The main parts I knew I wanted to try and include were the typical sailor scarf neckerchief, which I ended up extending in the back here to make into a split cape to try and tick that flowy element criteria off of the Genshin design checklist, but then I also wanted to mix that kind of fashionable element with something much more dorky by giving him a really well-equipped fisherman's vest with tons of pockets, and layering up his legs with waders and wellies and that kind of thing. On top of that, I also initially thought about giving him some kind of lantern element akin to an anglerfish, because I think that could have been really cool in concept, but that ended up being one feature that I really had no room left to include, because his silhouette already felt like it was getting a bit busy. But uh, yeah, I don't know, I feel like all the ideas were solid individually, but I might have tried to cram one too many into this design, especially after trying to give all of those ideas that I mentioned an extra dose of Inazuman fashion flair with the pleated shorts and rope detailing, and it just kind of left everything feeling a little bit muddled and cluttered in places, at least to me, but I know that I can also be kind of overly critical when it comes to my designs, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> That said, I do still really like this guy either way, uh, the composition was really fun to put together and the wave was a really interesting exercise in effects painting that very much reminded me that I really need to do more effects painting. Um, <laughs> 
I also think the fish being behind him while he looks off into the distance here is kind of a fun hint at what his personality might be like. Uh, like I said earlier, my personal working theory with Hydra characters is that they will tend to have a public facing persona and a very contrasting private persona. So while I don't fully know how that might manifest for him exactly, it is really fun to consider. Like, it might be fun if he was totally revered within the fishing association as this legendary fisherman who's really stoic and catches insanely big fish without a word. And, you know, he has all of these other tall tales surrounding him that have kind of snowballed in a way similar to King from One Punch Man, so no other fisherman ever dare to approach him or get in the way of his masterful zen-like focus on the art of the catch. But actually, he's just really eager to sit and fish with a friend and tell them everything he knows about fish, which is a lot because he's a humongous nerd. It might even be the case, uh, at least in his mind, that he only manages to catch such big fish so consistently because all of the other fishermen clear out as soon as he arrives, so of course he'd make the biggest catch of the day in any given location because nobody else is fishing there. All that to say, to the rest of the world he would be a legendary fisherman, but in his private moments he's generally just a pretty normal dude who joined the fishing association to make friends and fumbled the bag by being a little bit too good at fishing. I also think all of his moves would obviously need to be either wave-based or fish-based or both, and uh, I think this might already be the effect of that swordfish claymore if I remember correctly, but the idea of his elemental burst just being the ability to summon a really big fish or a tidal wave made of smaller fish is really fun to imagine. Um, <laughs> Altogether anyway, I'd say that this one was mostly a success. If I took another go at it, there are definitely areas that I would want to refine a bit again, but his concept is so fun to think about overall that I think I can forgive the areas of his design that ended up a little bit muddled, because at the end of the day he really is just a goofy little guy, and I don't think that's the kind of design that you gotta take too seriously. Uh, <laughs> Now moving on to the second to last design here, and both this one and the next are ones where I'm actually really happy with how they went overall. This one in particular is of the Electro element and the Tall Man body type, which is another combination that currently does not exist in the game itself. Uh, and as much as I am a big fan of Genshin Impact, I am also a big fan of all of the tall male characters in the game specifically. Uh, call me a fruit about it if you must, you would not be incorrect. Um, <laughs> I actually think I might have every tall male character in the game if I'm not mistaken, which is honestly just insane behaviour on my part I will admit, but um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely had a lot of fun trying my hand at expanding the pretty boy roster into new avenues with this one. This man's neck of the woods, by the way, is Liyue, because that's the nation which, according to my calculations at least, has the least Electro characters among its population compared to other regions. Besides all of that, his weapon is a sword, which is actually another instance of a choice being inspired by one particular kind of goofy looking weapon that can be found in the game itself. Specifically, I'm talking about this one sword that is based on a yokai and looks kind of like a fold umbrella with a cartoony face. I was less focused on the googly eye though, and more on the idea of a character who had an umbrella as their signature weapon. Building up from there, I landed on the notion of making a meteorologist, or some kind of weatherman basically, who is something of a bad weather magnet in and of himself, and is just constantly getting caught in the rain. But I was making an Electro character though, not Hydro, so the rain wasn't really my main focus either. Instead, in particular, wherever this man goes, thunderstorms and lightning are sure to follow, which would either make his job really difficult or mean that he would be an indisputable expert in the field of meteorology by predicting when it's going to storm with 100% accuracy, because as long as he's present in a given location, it will. Either way though, it is also the kind of trait that would likely either make people avoid him or make him distance himself from others, because he wouldn't want to quite literally rain on anybody's parade, which melancholy though it is, definitely felt like a good fit for an Electro character who, like I said before, tend to have that kind of outcast quality to them. Alternatively to the weatherman idea by the way, I did also consider the notion that he could just be a very lucky storm chaser as opposed to a very unfortunate weatherman. Uh, <laughs> so you know, this guy's got options. For his fighting style, in any case, the main concept that I cannot get out of my mind for him is the thought of him acting as a human lightning rod. I have a really vivid mental image of his big elemental burst move being that he raises his umbrella above him and unfolds it right as he gets struck by actual lightning, but it just like cascades off of him and gets redirected to hit whatever enemies might be surrounding him in kind of a, well, umbrella shaped kind of pattern of conduction. I also picture him having a bit of a gloomy and straightforward demeanor, but not a super serious one. Mostly because I think the weatherman thing really opens up a bunch of opportunities for him to have cool, like, weather forecast related voice lines, and more importantly, to make a lot of weather related puns. 
On that note, for his name, I decided to call him Li Xin, because again, to the best of my knowledge and probably very off the mark pronunciation, um, that is a name which means beautiful sunrise. And at first glance, that feels kind of mean because it obviously sounds like a hilariously ironic name for a man whose very presence is plagued by constant rain. But it also got me thinking about those sayings where there will always be like sun and rainbows after it rains and storms and, and that kind of thing. So I figure it would actually be a pretty accurate name for him, despite the initially gloomy impression he might give, because sure, he might bring storms wherever he goes, but he could also, perhaps even unbeknownst to him, leave beautiful bouts of sunshine in his wake as well. On the fashion front, I was kinda worried that his design might come off a bit too similar to Zhong Li, since he's also a tall man from Liyue with a long coat, but I'm hoping that there's enough difference between the two that this guy does look distinct enough on his own. One way that I did try to contrast his design well enough against Zhong Li's was by giving him a hood, since I knew this was an outfit for someone who would be getting rained on all the time, and also by giving him a cropped shirt and generally just more tight-fitting clothes underneath his coat than anything that Zhong Li would be wearing. Some common traits that I noticed were shared by characters from Liyue is that they will all have, much like the Inazuman designs, some kind of tasseled element somewhere on their outfit. Frequently, they may also have some kind of sash or draped cloth, and obviously their clothes will have a Chinese-inspired style, because Liyue is a Chinese-inspired region. So, I tried to incorporate all of those factors into Li Xin's design here through the angled cut of his shirt, the tie around his waist, and the detailing throughout his outfit. I decided to give him a mostly grayscale color palette as well, and tried to add a bunch of cloud-like prints and patterns throughout his clothes, in order to give him an overall visual that would make anyone looking at him think of storm clouds. I also gave him kind of a permanent wet look hairstyle, with strands kind of separating and curling to cover his eyes a bit, and cling close around his neck like he's just gotten caught in the rain. Weirdly, I think the part of this splash art that took the absolute longest was actually the clouds in the background, which look like they should have been relatively simple, so uh, just goes to show again that I really need to do more effects work honestly, but like I say, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Maybe I just needed to start drawing hot men to really get in my stride with all of these. Who can say? Um. <laughs> Speaking of which, last but not least, I think today's final design is a real contender for my fave out of all seven of the Genshin characters that I've now tried my hand at making. I've kinda had my doubts about the uniqueness or overall success of pretty much all the other designs in this video, at least to some degree, but this one I am just entirely happy with. So this character is a wielder of the Animo element, and is also based around the tall male character model, which for whatever reason is another combination of traits that currently does not exist on the Genshin roster whatsoever. He also hails from Fontaine, the French European sort of region in the game, and uses a catalyst as his weapon. Now, those basic traits aside, with this one I really tried to pay attention and kind of crack the code of Fontaine's costume design principles when designing this character, because he is a fashion designer, and uh, by a stroke of pure uncanny coincidence by the way, not long after I first came up with an idea for this guy, I actually heard rumblings that we might be getting a fashion designer character in the actual game sometime soon, but until that's confirmed and until they come out, this is my take on somebody with that job. Uh, <laughs> Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but while characters from Liyue and Inazuma tend to have tassels and rope detailing in their costumes, and Sumeru characters will typically all have some kind of gold or gemstone accessories, the main design element that I noticed appearing across the board between I think literally every character from Fontaine so far was that every single one had at least one bow somewhere in their outfit. Now I will admit Rice Lee did seem like an outlier to that trend at first, but he does have a necktie, which is like one step removed from a bow tie and is basically a ribbon, so I'm just gonna stay vindicated on this one. Everybody's got some kind of bow, or something tied, I don't know. <laughs> Those are the main focus here anyway, so I figured if this character was indeed a fashion designer, then maybe they could be where a lot of people in Fontaine get their clothes from, and maybe that would mean that bows are like the signature feature of his designs, kind of like, um... I should say, I don't know a whole lot about actual real-life fashion standards or anything, but kind of like when designers put their initials as a logo on anything that they make. That kind of thing. So I ended up kind of centering this character's entire design around the notion that he should just have as many big old bows in his costume as I could possibly make look good. And somehow, I think I actually managed to make that work. 
I'm really fond of the one on his shoulder in particular, it's a real statement piece to show off his vision, but there are also like ribbons going up the side of his trousers, and he has one as a little necktie, and it doesn't quite come across fully here because of the pose and the fact that it's kind of a front view in the um, uh, concept sketch, but I did design his coat with the idea in mind that the back panel would crisscross down from the shoulders behind him and be tied together to make just the biggest bow that you can see billowing in the back there. What I do think comes across pretty clearly here is that I imagined his personality to be very confident and flamboyant, and for his overall vibes to be obviously fashionable, uh, but also a little bit androgynous. I kind of wanted him to have a Yelan or Yaimiko or even Ayato-like personality too, where he's kind of just a little bit sus, particularly in the sense that like he definitely seems like he knows a lot more than he's letting on in any given conversation, but you know, to be fair, I'm sure there's a lot of gossip to be found in Fontaine's fashion industry and general high society circles, so that does feel like the kind of weirdly in-the-know energy that would be pretty befitting of somebody in his position. Contrary to Yelan's role in the actual game though, where she is basically an undercover spy and keeper of secrets, I have the feeling that this fella would love a bit of gossip over a good cup of tea, and would by no means be adverse to spreading a rumour or two just to stir the pot. It did take a decent amount of trial and error on my part to figure out what kind of colour palette would look best for this character, but I am so happy with the combination of like minty animo green and darker plum that I ended up going with. It feels really refreshing to look at after a couple of designs in a row that were maybe a bit more monotone, and that mint and plum combo was also just varied enough to allow for bright little pops of colour to weave throughout the entire outfit. On the topic of weaving, I think his moveset would be made up of a bunch of very voguing inspired physical movements as you can kind of see here. Like he would definitely be very extra about it and do all of his maneuvers with a bit of a flourish. I also think that uh, at the very least his big elemental burst move would manifest as all of the various haberdashery props that you can see in the background of this piece. Mannequins, sewing needles, ribbons, a whole workshop of windspun creations just running absolute rings around his opponents. I feel like it's the kind of visual motif that would lend itself well to a moveset that could maybe be focused on traps or area control especially, maybe by binding his foes up in ribbon or raining magic sewing needles down on them as if they're some kind of pincushion, or even summoning mannequins in various outfits to act as decoys to distract his enemies. Definitely a lot of fun options to think about. As far as his name goes, by the way, I was honestly drawing a blank on that right up until I started working on the edit for this video, but then I had a sudden epiphany when I realised that this fabulous fashion designer could simply be named Bo which is not only the French word for beautiful, but also a name that put the biggest dumbest smile on my face when I realised that it's also a pun, because it sounds exactly like the signature detail that his entire design was inspired by and also features thoroughly throughout his entire outfit and all of his designs. Anyway, on that note, I think I've rambled quite enough for one day, so I think that's going to be just about it for today. Thank you all very much for stopping by and having a nice little character design session with me today, and before we make a couple of wishes and take a full look at today's fully finished character lineup, here's wishing that you'll all keep on staying as safe, happy, and healthy as you possibly can. I'll see you next time.